Welcome to the Professional Mac OS Programming course. My name is Diodus and I have been programming since 2007. I have worked with different programming languages including Java and C Sharp. For the last 8 years I have focused my career entirely on developing on the iOS platform. I have a master's degree in software engineering. I have developed over 50 apps working as a freelancer. Currently, I work remotely for a startup and I really do enjoy my work. I have a strong passion for teaching and for high-res development in general. In this video, we're going to be looking at the course requirements, the course goals and the course overview. In the first section, we're going to be doing basic introduction and learn how to set up a macOS project. We're going to learn how to add a split view to a macOS app. We're going to learn how to set up IB outlets. And then we're going to learn how to display list of items in a table view. In the second section, we're going to be improving on the app that we developed in the first section. We're going to learn how to load images from the app bundle. We're going to learn how to use the table delegate and the table data source functions. And we're going to learn how to set the app minimum size. And then we're going to learn how to detect when a table row is selected. In the third section, we're going to be introducing the collection view object. We're going to learn how to design the grid view for the app. We're going to learn how to use the document directory and also learn how to create subdirectory inside the document directory. And finally, we're going to learn how to display images in a collection view. In section four of the course, we're going to be learning about the toolbar and social sharing. We're going to learn how to add the toolbar to a window controller. We're going to be adding custom buttons to the toolbar. We're going to perform actions when the toolbar button is clicked. And finally, we're going to be learning how to show the sharing services that are available for a selected item. In section five, we're going to be learning about the menu bar, popover and alerts. We're going to learn how to remove a window and icon from the app. We're going to add status bar and many items. We're going to learn how to display alerts when a menu item is selected. And we're going to learn how to show the app in a popover. In section six, we're going to be learning about data persistence and key presses. We're going to learn how to save data to the NS user default. We're going to learn how to detect key presses and also identify when a particular modifier key has been pressed. And then we're going to learn how to add multiple buttons to alerts. In section seven, we're going to be learning about map and location. We're going to learn how to get the user's current location. We're going to show the user's location on a map and then zoom to the user's location. We're going to detect clicks on the map using the click gesture recognizer and then we're going to show map address using reverse geocoding. In section 8 of the course, we're going to be learning about view and layer animation. We're going to learn how to use the animator proxy object, how to animate layers, how to use the animation completion handler and how to use the CA basic animation class for advanced animations. In section 9, we're going to be learning about the sprite kit game development. We are going to be introducing sprite kit basics. We're going to be learning about sprite nodes, properties and action, how to use a timer and mouse functions, how to add physics body and how to detect contact between two bodies. And then we're going to be adding scores, transitions and game over scene. In the final section of the course, we're going to be developing a basic browser app. We're going to learn how to create and use a custom window controller. We're going to learn how to show website on a web view, how to use the navigation delegate function. And finally, we're going to learn how to add icon to the app. These are all the topics that will be covered in the course. In order to be able to follow along with this course, you must have a basic working knowledge of the Swift programming language. You must have a Mac computer running the latest Mac OS operating system. You should also have Xcode installed on your computer. This can be downloaded for free from the App Store. And finally, if you are already familiar with iOS development, this knowledge will be beneficial, but it is not required. At the end of this course, you will be confident in the ability to develop your own macOS apps. You will become familiar with different frameworks such as the WebKit and the MapKit frameworks. You will understand the basics of SpriteKit game development. And finally, you will understand some of the differences between the iOS and the macOS platforms. Without wasting any more time, let's get started with the first section of the course. 
See you in the next section. Thank you.